G'day kids. Thanks for tuning in to another Aussie episode. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that way you won't miss out on any of the new videos we put out and it would certainly make my day. In the meantime, enjoy this video. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day kids, Ozzy here. Now today we're going to talk to three-time Olympic Australian swimmer, Mitch Larkin. Now Mitch is a six-time gold medal winner at the Commonwealth Games. He's won gold medals at world championship events and even won a silver and a bronze medal at the Olympics. It's pretty epic. Now I was lucky enough to have a chat with Mitch not long after he returned home from the Tokyo Olympics. Now Mitch is not only a top swimmer, but he is also a champion bloke. Now, if you want to become an elite swimmer or just be inspired to achieve your own goals in life, then Mitch has buckets of advice for you. So come on, kids and grown-ups, it's time to meet Mitch Larkin. Mitch Larkin, g'day, mate. Aussie here. How are you? Yeah, I'm well, thank you. I'm uh, up in Darwin at the moment, but uh, freshly off the Olympic Games, which is pretty exciting. So um looking forward to getting home and hopefully celebrating with some friends and family as well yeah i have no doubt mate um it's been uh quite the journey i'm sure throughout the games and then now two week uh quarantine up there in darwin um you've definitely deserved the right to get out and see the family and, and celebrate and give some some big hugs out i'm sure yeah absolutely you know it's pretty crazy to think um the olympic games were pushed back a full 12 months because of covid um, and so that threw our plans um, well and truly out the window. The biggest change for us was um, obviously there was no spectators as well. So we're competing in these stadiums with, um, you know, had a capacity of sort of 20, 30,000 people um, and are absolutely dead. So that was a big difference for us. But, you know, we're fantastic to um, obviously let the games go ahead. It's a massive honour to go and compete for Australia and your country. Um, you know, it's super exciting and it's something I love. And, and as you said, you know, looking forward to finally getting home. We've been on the road now. Um, you know, six, seven, almost eight weeks. It's been a long time, um, but very much looking forward to getting home and, and like you said, seeing some friends and family. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And um, I'm sure they're looking forward to seeing you too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's it's pretty cool. You know, when I get home, I come back, see my mum and dad, um, you know, and they get to see all the uniform for the first time. And, and um, you know, it's pretty special. They go through all our photos um, and we've got plenty of good stories to tell as well. No doubt. Mitch, for those kids at home that don't know you, you are an Australian swimmer, a very successful Australian swimmer, I might add, as part of the Dolphins, the Australian swimming team. As you said, you've just returned home from competing in Tokyo at the Games. Now, there are a lot of Olympic sports, Mitch. So how did you choose swimming and what age were you when you first tried it and why? Yeah, um, so... For me, I grew up in Budrum on the Sunshine Coast um, in Queensland. Um, obviously there we have, you know, the nice beaches as well. And um, I had a pool in my backyard. I had a creek um, running through the backyard as well. So I think it was only normal that I was attracted to water. Um, you know, obviously in Queensland, we have nice sunny weather, always outdoors. And so I just was a pretty active kid. Um, but swimming for me was, was my absolute favorite. I loved being in the water. Um, and when I was with mum, you know, we'd often, she'd often joke that I'd be the first one in and the last one to leave the pool. So, you know, I think it was a natural progression for me to fall in love with swimming. And and then as I joined, um, you know, sort of learned swim programs, I really enjoyed that. I enrolled in just a local swimming club night. Um, so every Friday nights we'd, we'd come down to the local pool and we'd just swim, a, um, you know, some casual laps. I started actually swimming across the length of the pool, which was 12 and a half meters. And all my goal was just was to progress and get faster and faster. And then once you achieved a the time there, you then progressed to swimming the full 25 meters. Um, and the same sort of thing, once you got a, a time you achieved, you could then swim 50 meters. And so for me, my goal was just, you know, progressing up the ranks um, to those longer distances as fast as possible. Um, and like you said, you know, I was a pretty active kid. I did athletics, um, little athletics. Um, I played some touch footy. I did all sorts of sports, but for me, um, swimming was the one I was absolutely passionate about and the one that I really loved. Um, and so, yeah, I joined a, a bit of a, a sort of learn to swim uh, school where they sort of teach you some technique and some skill development. 
Um, and then before you know it, I was sort of swimming at an Australian level, um, you know, representing Queensland, which was an absolute sort of dream come true of mine. Um, I was really fortunate. Um, I was quite young um, and the Sydney 2000 Olympics was on TV. And that was the first time that I ever said to my parents, you know, I want to go to the Olympics. Um, little did I know, I guess, the amount of work that it took. Um, and some, you know, uh, 12 years later, I actually made my first Olympic team, which was London 2012. Um, I then went to Rio 2016, and this is my third Olympic Games now, um, Tokyo 2020 slash sort of 2021. Um, and I absolutely love the sport. You know, like I said, I get to travel the world doing things that I love. Um, you know, I've made some fantastic friendships. Um, you know, I've known some of the team members here for 20 years almost, um, you know, growing in and out um, of, of sort of local swimming clubs. And then, you know, we've progressed to make the senior team now and, and represent Australia, which is um, an absolute honour of mine. Yeah, mate, you've, you've certainly had uh, a very successful career. It's been fantastic to sit back and watch it as a spectator. Now, I'm sure you've inspired many, many kids uh, from the next generation, you know, looking to become an Olympian themselves or even just to achieve their best. Uh, for the kids out there, there's a lot of kids, it's part of Australian culture, right, to, to get out and learn to swim. But for those kids that are keen to start to get a little bit competitive, what is the next step for, for the young kids? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think if you talk to any um, Dolphins member on the team currently, we all have different stories about how we got into the team. So there's not just one way, which is fantastic. Um, you know, and we all started at different ages as well. Some of them were quite young, like myself, getting, you know, pretty early to learn to swim. Um, but we've got actually members on the team that only sort of started swimming, you know, five or six years ago and then able to represent Australia at the Olympics. So there's not just one way to do it. It was just finding the things that I really love about the sport. Um, you know, I'm a competitive person um, and I always wanted to swim faster, you know, whatever it is, whatever stroke, whatever event, whatever distance. For me, it was just about challenging, you know, getting faster and faster and finding those little ways to do that. Um, and so, as I mentioned, you know, I joined a local um, swimming club and then I enjoyed it so much. I then progressed to sort of squad swimming and, and worked on those, um, you know, fundamental sort of those techniques, um, those skills. Um, you know, we did some stroke development, plenty of drills, but at the same time, really focusing on just having fun. You know, it's sport at the end of the day. Um, you've got to love what you do. Otherwise, you know, it is a very long road. Um, and then, like I said, I progressed from uh, regional swimming to state swimming and then progressed onto the Australian sort of team. Um, and then eventually in 2011, I made my first uh, senior international competition. And then, you know, the rest is history. Some, you know, 20, uh, 10 years later, I'm still on the Dolphins team, um, you know, with the ambitions to sort of still be there for the next, um, you know, Olympic campaign in, in Paris 2024. That's awesome, mate. It's good to hear. Um, you're in quarantine at the moment. As you said, you've got one day to go. It's very um, relieving, I'm sure, to get out. But not being able to swim and, and be in the pool, has that? do you think that's fueled the fire to just want to get out and just jump back in that pool and train harder and uh, and achieve that goal of getting to the next Olympics at Paris? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, this point in time, you know, I, I sort of absolutely miss swimming. Um, you know, we usually have a bit of a break. Um, so I'm looking forward to sort of getting home and putting my feet back for another couple of weeks. But I very much miss sort of being in the water. Um, you know, a few of us here want to catch up and go for a surf and, and swim in the oceans we have at home. Um, but I certainly missed it last year um, when COVID was first announced. Um, you know, we we're obviously training really hard, full steam, um, sort of gearing up for, for the Olympics. And then the news of it being postponed and everything shutting down was really difficult, um, you know, right before one of our biggest major meets, um, you know, over four year cycles. Um, so it was really difficult. And I certainly fell in love with the sport again. Um, you know, I was itching to get back in the water and just sort of get back into training. And I really appreciated, I guess, the things that I loved. Um, and, you know, for me, it was a, a massive, massive humbling experience, um, you know, just to appreciate those little things again, um, being around my friends. Um, you know, the early mornings are pretty difficult. We sort of get up at 5 a.m. Um, but, you know, when it's taken away from you, you sort of appreciate, you know, life's pretty good um, and you just want to get back there as soon as you can. So. I was always unsure whether I would swim on after these games, but you know, sort of having it taken away during COVID, um, you know, I was very much sort of made up my mind that I'm not done just yet um, and I want to swim on for the next three years. Well, that's a beautiful thing to hear, mate, because uh, I know as a, as a spectator watching you swim, it, um, it, it brings a lot of happiness to Australians. Uh, you're an important part of the team and you have been for quite a while. You know, three Olympics, um, you've had a, a successful career so far. And I'm very, very happy to hear that you're not quite done, mate. But um, 
Over that successful career, what has been your highlight? That's a tough question. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's pretty interesting. I get asked all the time, you know, what's my favourite swim? Um, and I think you look back at a preparation or, you know, the medals at the end of the day and you sort of look at how much work um, and sort of how much has gone into just achieving that. And each swim and each major meet is always slightly different. Um, you know, so for me, it's hard to go past uh, Rio 2016. I picked up an individual silver medal. Um, I picked up a bronze as well as part of the relay and then a fourth in one of my ind individual events. So that was a pretty successful meet. Um, and then I look back to uh, the Commonwealth Games in 2018 on the Gold Coast. Um, we had a home crowd um, and I actually swam and achieved five, five from five gold medals, which was a pretty incredible achievement. Um, you know, I look back at just every every sort of swim that I did and what it took to, to sort of stand at number one on that podium. And obviously you see the Australian flag and get to sing the anthem quite proudly, but each swim had its own challenges and um, its own difficulties and, and sort of to get through each one of them, um, you know, step by step. And on the last night of the competition, I was actually swimming for two gold medals. Um, I sort of ticked the box and, and achieved one of them, but I knew the last event that I had to do was going to be the hardest. It was the men's medley relay. Um, and I led them off obviously as a backstroker and I knew just the amount of work and the determination of the three other guys in my team. Um, and we touched the wall with 0.2 um, of a second, the smallest margin, and we picked up gold. So absolutely incredible achievement. And, and for me, that's probably one of the most special moments, um, you know, getting to share the podium uh, with your friends. You know, you get these incredible stories and you get to share it with, you know, three other guys, which is, um, you know, pretty special. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome to hear because Swimming is quite an individual sport, isn't it? But um, there's obviously opportunities to swim as part of a relay team. And even if you don't get those opportunities, swimming, you might be there presenting a team that's behind you that's helped you get to that stage, right? You've got your coaches and, and whoever else. Who, who else um, in your team throughout your career has helped you achieve uh, success? Yeah, as you said, you know, swimming is an individual sport. Um, and at times you feel really selfish, I guess, being the athlete going out there um, you know, and you sort of do get a bit of the fame and the attention, but you are representing, I guess, a pyramid of whole, you know, different people. And um, obviously my parents have played a big um, supportive role for the number of years. Mum was the one that drove me to the early morning um, training sessions when I was in school. She packed my lunches. She really looked after me. So, you know, I have to take my hat off to both my mum and dad. Um, you know, they really inspired me at, from a young age. And, and I guess they're the number one supporters of me. We wouldn't be where we are today without our squad. Um, I've got a coach, I've got a physio, um, and I swim in about a squad with 20 other people. Um, you know, some of them are my best mates. We've been swimming together for years. We're so like-minded, we have similar goals. Um, and to sort of, I guess, you know, put in all the hard work, you saw, you sort of see these ups and downs of athletes and you become really close with one another. So, you know, it's a very uh, difficult sport. You know, we always sort of get our face in the water and we're not talking too much, but, you know, the bonds that you do create with your friends, um, you know, before and after training, and they're certainly there to sort of, I guess, help you whenever you need that um you know uplift and support it's a pretty good sport you know as i said i've, I've loved what i've done and um you know i wouldn't be here where i am today without you know the support of i guess my parents coach um you know my whole team and, and friends and family as well awesome mate so who is do you have a favorite aussie teammate who's your best mate <laughs> yeah i do um one of my best mates is, is mac horton um you know he won gold in 2016 as a 400 freestyler um, but as you mentioned, you know, the team here is so tight knit. We're all, you know, so close. Um, you know, I could sort of almost name the whole team and, and we'd get along really well. But for me, you know, Mac Horton's one of my best mates. We room together, celebrate the highs and, and sometimes, you know, get each other through the lows as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, mate, I know you um, swimming, there's multiple, there's, there's lots of different strokes. You do lots of them yourself. Um, <laughs> I've got a question from a little swimming fan who loved to watch you at the Olympics. This yep. is from Channing. He's eight and he's from Sydney. And he simply asked, what's your favorite swimming stroke? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and to answer, I think it's changed over the years as well. Um, I grew up actually being a breaststroker, <laughs> which yep. is probably my least favorite stroke at the moment now. And um, as I got older, you know, my, my sort of body changed and it grew and I got a bit stronger. Um, sort of my preference and my favorite strokes definitely changed. Um, and as you mentioned, I, I swim uh, predominantly backstroke, which would be my favorite, um, but I also do the medley as well. So I do train all four strokes, um, you know, to put them all into one race. It's it's pretty difficult and, um, you know, you have to be a well-rounded sort of swimmer to be 
successful in the medley. But for me, um, I love backstroke. I train in an outdoor pool in Brisbane. So usually people complain because I get to look at the sun and, and sort of the blue yeah. sky and the birds and the clouds. And, um, you know, I absolutely love sort of being a backstroker. I, I've, um, you know, it's an absolute passion of mine. Is that why you chose backstroke, mate? So you can um, get a tan on, on your face and the, the body while you're swimming backwards? Absolutely. Um, yeah. People say I chose backstroke because it's the lazy man stroke. Um, right. you know, we're just lying on our back the whole time. But yeah, I absolutely love swimming backstroke and, um, you know, pretty, pretty happy with where it's sort of taken me. Mate, I can, I've seen, you know, I've heard about the training you guys do, you, you're professional athletes and you're Olympians. I don't think any of the strokes are a lazy man or a lazy woman <laughs> stroke. So um, congratulations for achieving what you have and, and, and working so hard in your selected or chosen lazy man stroke. <laughs> um, as an Olympian though, can you, do you remember a pivotal moment in your life as a youngster maybe that inspired you to become an Olympian? Yeah, um, I think for me it was the Sydney Olympics. Um, I actually um, was at home living in Brisbane. Um, I joined my local primary school swimming club, so I was a big fan of swimming. Um, and at the time I actually had broken my arm um, I was on the trampoline and sort of fallen off and ended up with a with a cast and I managed to convince my mom that I needed to stay home from school um, and basically watch the Olympics from start to finish which was pretty cool and obviously yeah, loving swimming I was you know glued closely to the TV watching um, some of my idols um, Ian Thorpe, um, Grant Hackett, uh, you know Susie O'Neill they were all, the, all these famous people that I used to grow up and loved watching competing at Sydney um, and so I think that was the first time that I ever said to mum, you know, I wanted to represent Australia at the Olympics. Um, I didn't really care at that time which sport or, or what I did. I just knew I wanted to wear the green and gold, um, you know, and, and compete in the Olympics. And, um, you know, funny enough, I, I love swimming. And so it seemed that natural progression to, I guess, um, pursue swimming. But um, yeah, I think that was the first time that I ever um, said to mum that I wanted to be an Olympian. But you know, for me, every time you watch a games, you know, it inspires, I guess, the next generation. And it's just a reminder of, um, you know, how special it is. And, and you know, you know, every Olympics, you're that little step close to maybe achieving your goal and, and your dream one day. Yeah, that's awesome, mate. Um, it must be very, very special to wear the green and gold. I can only imagine. I mean, my favourite colours are obviously green and gold as well. Um, heavily influenced by uh, our Aussie team in, in all <laughs> yeah. sports. And um, love watching the Olympics and love watching you be part of it um now just on that we've got another little uh a question from another little fan that, that also loved watching you and the rest of the swim team at the olympics this is from fraser and he's five years old he's from sydney and he wants to know did you have fun at the olympics hi fraser yeah absolutely um i think it's it's really important to remind yourself um you know people ask me why i swim um and the easiest answer is because i love it um we have lots of fun and so absolutely, you know, you are there obviously competing and it's, it can be quite stressful at times. Um, but that's one of the things that I try to remind myself um, and I tell myself before I walk out behind the blocks is, you know what, just have fun. You're getting to do something that you love. Um, just go out there and enjoy it. Um, we, we're constantly taking photos on our phones and cameras and, um, you know, we look forward to just, just sharing those memories and those videos that we have. And um, that's been one of the best things about quarantine. You know, we've been able to sort of sit and talk and, and sort of reflect and tell stories about the games and, and just sort of have a laugh at anything funny that happened, um, you know, and all, I guess all the, the fun moments that we did have. So, yeah, we absolutely had um, a lot of fun at the Olympics. That's good to hear because if you're having fun, then you're generally going to be more successful in life in anything you do. That's what we, yeah. um, we try and – it's one of the messages we try and um, promote to the, the kids that enjoy watching Aussie. So um, that's important, mate. Thank you for sharing that. But – on no doubt you've you've got lots of memories from Tokyo. Um, what is your favourite memory? Yeah, that's hard. Um, a lot. Uh, one of my my favourite memories would be um, Zach Stubbley Cook winning the gold in the tournament of breaststroke. Um, he's a good friend of mine, um, and I've seen him sort of progress from he when he first made the junior or the junior team, and then onto the senior team as well. Um, he actually missed the final at the Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast in 2018. Um, you know, and he was pretty upset, but then sort of for him to turn it around and absolutely come out at these Olympics and, and, and win gold, um, you know, I sort of did get a bit emotional. Um, I was there when he walked back into the team area after suing the race. Um, his coach came up to him and, and sort of said, look, two things. Firstly, you know, well done. 
And secondly, we need to get out a little bit faster that first hundred. So it was a pretty tough critic, but um, for me, you know, I gave him a hug. Um, we all sort of got to celebrate his successes and um, and then obviously go up to the stands, um, sing the national anthem and, and watch our flag get raised, which is a, a pretty special moment. But it's hard to sort of sum up, I guess, a week. We had such fantastic swimming in the pool. Emma McKeon um, picked up a whole range of gold medals, which was pretty special as well. So seeing her on the last night finish a massive uh, week of racing, um, you know, she was pretty proud with her efforts. And we got to sort of do an Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi together as a team. Um, and that was pretty powerful just to wrap up uh, a pretty successful swimming meet. Yeah, I saw the video of that. And if the kids out there watching haven't seen it, I encourage them to go and watch it on <laughs> socials. It's, um, it's a pretty powerful moment. I can only imagine would have been awesome to be part of and even to just be part of your teammates success um that's um i'm sure a really nice part of of swimming as a, a part of a team like the dolphins yeah very special um you know like you mentioned before and we spoke about swimming is an individual um, sport but at the same time you know getting to share and, and just enjoy those moments when someone has um you know done something really special um, I said to Zach, you know, this moment will be with you for the rest of your lives. Um, and what a pleasure it is that we can get to share it with you. Um, you know, it's pretty special. And, you know, just seeing his face, you know, holding his gold medal, he's just absolutely in awe. So it's pretty special. Um, and that Aussie Aussie Oi um, that we did was absolutely incredible. Um, we actually stood outside near our village um, and the whole American team was shocked at just sort of how loud we, we screamed it. And, um, I guess that's just so much pride that we have for the team and, and obviously wearing the green and gold and, and being a Dolphin. So, yeah, that was a pretty special moment. Yeah, there's nothing can um, quite compare to the Aussie pride. And you, we saw it as spectators back in Australia in so many moments throughout the games. Um, but, yeah, there's there's a lot to be said about the Aussie pride and, and uh, the way it brings people together as athletes, but also as a nation, as spectators too. So thank you, mate, for providing that for for Aussies in such a tough time because there's so many people in so many parts of Australia in lockdown. So you gave us all something to to really hold hope in and uh, and be proud of and and find a bit of a smile in every day. Yeah, no, thank you very much. And obviously it was difficult. Um, you know, we know that we were so fortunate. Um, we were the lucky ones that we could get over to Tokyo. Um, you know, there was obviously so many people in lockdown and stuck at homes and. Just the amount of messages that we were receiving from young kids um you know i do a lot of work with school kids as well um and they were certainly struggling uh learning online and they said look it gave us a bit of inspiration a bit of hope that if you guys could sort of achieve your dreams um in the difficult circumstances being locked in um and still train you know it, it gives them a bit of hope to do the same thing and you know it, it sort of i guess is the reason why we do it you do it because um, you know, someone at home might be watching and you just give them that little hope and that little inspiration of, um, I guess, if you do set your mind to a goal and a dream, um, you know, anything is certainly possible. That's a nice message, mate. We, um, it's one of the, one of the, our sayings is stay keen. Um, so it's yeah. sort of, it's all about just, you know, choosing goals and, and um, sticking to them and, and achieving that success in life, whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, Mitch, I did want to ask, I noticed obviously you're wearing glasses, but you're a swimmer, so you can't swim in glasses. Yeah. And for the kids out there that are wondering, how does Mitch see when he's in the pool? Do you have special yeah. goggles? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, I've it's not uh, it's pretty well known that I have poor eyesight. I'm pretty blind, um, sure. but yeah, I, I played around with a few options. So we can get specially made goggles that we wear, um, but they don't sort of come in the style that I like. So. I actually wear contacts um, where I, when I swim. So I take my glasses off, sort of pop a couple of contacts in um, and that allows me to swim. But for a while there, there was a number of years where I actually didn't do either. Um, I just sort of swim without my, my um, glasses on. And one of the difficulties was reading the scoreboard. Um, you know, right. I often wouldn't know sort of, I guess where I finished in a race or even, you know, what time I swam. So that was often a pretty nice surprise, um, yeah. you know, after the race sort of having to talk to people and find out, you know, how I just went. But um, one of the biggest things my coach sort of said to me a couple of years ago was you need glasses, um, you need your contacts, you need to be able to see when you're swimming. So um, it certainly helps with, I guess, um, knowing where I am, um, just looking off the roof, swimming backstroke. So I swim nice and straight rather than sort of zigzagging down the lane. Um, but yeah, it's it sort of certainly has made a lot of a difference. Yeah, I have no doubt, mate. Um, I, I imagine you don't want to add any extra distance by swimming zigzags down the lane if you're 
you know, you want to do the same amount as your, um, your, the athletes you're competing against. Yeah, absolutely. Um, swimming's a sport where, you know, the smallest of margins can be the difference between um, standing on the podium or sort of missing out. Um, you know, we put so much attention into detail just to improve those small 1%. So you're right, you know, swimming straight's an easy way to improve that just by cutting out, you know, a, f- a couple of um, extra few metres. Yeah, definitely. Now, Mitch, you're a very passionate man. You're a very talented man. If you weren't a swimmer, what sport would you love to be good at? <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, you know, I, I we get to watch these Olympics and you sort of see people achieving such incredible things in their own sport and you think, oh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. Um, but if I wasn't swimming, um, I would pick a sport that's probably not at the Olympics. Um, you know, I, I love Formula One. Um, I love watching the guys drive the cars really fast and, and sort of, um, you know, seeing them achieve what they can do in these amazing, um, you know, sort of vehicles. So for me, it would probably be Formula One. Um, and then if not, um, I'd love to be a surfer. I think they live a pretty cool lifestyle. Growing up on the Sunshine Coast, um, obviously love the ocean, but um, I think surfing, you know, would be pretty cool. Traveling the world, um, you know, and getting to just sort of swim in the ocean and have a lot of fun. Certainly would be good fun. It's, um, it's a great sport and it was awesome to see it included as an Olympic sport this year. Um, I think it was pretty successful and I hope it's, hope it's here to stay. Maybe we'll see Mitch Larkin back one day, uh, maybe at Paris or even uh, Brizzy. 32 as an Olympic uh, surfer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think what a way to sort of have the Olympics in Brisbane in 2032 and um, maybe some of your viewers might actually be there one day, which is awesome to see. And what a great spot to um, hold a surfing competition, you know, whether it's um, on the Gold Coast at Surfers Paradise or even on the Sunshine Coast, you know, I think, um, you know, it'd be pretty amazing, uh, you know, images sent around the world of, of Australia and, and um, you know, the beautiful country that we do live in. Yeah, definitely, mate. Now, Mitch, I'm going to ask a couple of quick fire questions here. Mm-hmm. Vegemite or peanut butter? Vegemite. Good man. Superman or Spider Man? Uh, Superman. You move as quick often, as Superman. Yeah, I often get referred to as Clark with my glasses. So, um, Superman, it is. <laughs> You're already half Superman. You're halfway there, mate. Uh, dogs or cats? Uh, dogs. Milo, hot or cold? Cold. Nice. Would you prefer to be able to fly or be invisible? Oh, probably fly, I think. Nice. Pet dinosaur or pet dragon? Uh, dragon. Nice. Would you rather be the funniest person alive or the smartest person alive? <laughs> Funniest, I think. <laughs> Good. Wiggles or play school? Uh, oh, both. Um, I'm probably going to go Wiggles, to be honest. Yeah, I do. I do not mind the Wiggles myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maths or science? Uh, science. Yep. Training or sleeping? Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Training, yeah. Uh, sometimes training's really good, and then sometimes you know it's really difficult, and um, you'd much rather be sleeping. But I think, uh, yeah, you take training because those good moments are, are pretty special. Nice. Beach or snow? Beach. Nice. Sneakers or thongs? Ah, uh, sneakers. Surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, gold medal or PB? Uh, PB. Nice. Finally, tough one here. Rice bubbles or wheat bix? Uh, wheat bix. Very good. How do you have them? Um, I have about six um, with milk, honey, um, you know, and some yogurt if I can. Um, there's plenty of early mornings when I was eating wheat bix um, between training and going to school. So, um, absolutely love wheat bix, and we've been surviving off them here as well. Nice. That's a nice Aussie snack. Now, Mitch, I'm going to play another quick game. It's an alphabet mm-hmm. game. I'm going to name an animal and a location. Yeah. And I can start. I'm going to start at A, then you're going to go B, and then we'll go. We'll alternate. Sure. All right. So, antelope in the attic. Um, B in Brisbane. Nice. Cane toad in the Christmas tree. 
dog in uh, Denmark. Nice. Elephant in England. Giraffe in Georgia. Mitch, what comes after E? F. What comes after? You missed F. Oh, I missed F. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm on F. Um, um, fly in Finland. <laughs> Very good, mate. We could go on forever. It's a, it's a whole lot of fun, that one. But, mate, I do want to finish with one last question. As I said before, my favourite saying is to stay keen. That's what we always try and teach the kids is to try lots of different things, to find what you love. And if you set your sights on something that you, you really want to do and you really want to achieve, then you can as long as you stay keen. So Mitch Absolutely. Larkin, Mitch Larkin, how do you stay keen? Um, that's a good question. I think, um, you know, find something you love is the easiest thing. Um, you know, find elements about something that you love and focus on them. Um, for me, you know, there's things of swimming that I really love and things that I don't enjoy as much. But, um, you know, when I'm in those difficult times or it's the early mornings in winter when it's cold, you know, I try and think about, you know, the moments that I do love, you know, which is swimming fast, um, obviously representing my country, um, you know, and getting to share those moments, you know, with your friends as well. So, um, yeah, absolutely like that. And, and I have a saying as well, um, whether, you, whether you think you can or think you can't, you'll probably be right. Um, and so that's just about, you know, staying as, as um, you know, positive as you can and, and sort of, um, you know, focusing on what you can achieve and um, you never know what's possible. I love it, Mitch. Words of wisdom from a very successful man. I have no doubt that you've inspired many, many uh, kids of the next generation uh, across our country and all over the world, um, not just in this podcast, not just in this, in this chat today, but through your whole career, mate. So congratulations, mate. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good luck with your next goals. And Mitch, stay keen. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Stay keen. If you haven't already, make sure you get a great app to help you hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss out on any of the new and exciting videos that we put out. Speaking of new and exciting, if there's a video that you'd love to see Aussie do, make sure you send us a message on our socials, on Facebook or Instagram at Aussie for Kids. We'll see you again soon kids. And until then, stay keen. Oh, and by the way, did you happen to find the hidden Aussie icon in that video? Yeah, make sure you look closely because they're in every single video. That's right. Stay keen, kids. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours, and he's a friend of.